All right, it's Friday, uh, the 27th of October, 2023, and you're welcome to Good Afternoon Ghana. We're live from the studios here at North Ridge, and from now till uh, 3 p.m., we're bringing you details of what has been captured as far as the challenges in the country is concerned, and our attention today is shifted to the legal arena. So, in the legal arena, we have, uh, you know, an act that establishes what we call the Ghana Aid, and of course, it has responsibilities, it has duties, how are we even patronizing it? But really, if we talk about Ghana's legal aid, do you know about it? Do you know its existence? Do you actually use it or try to even, you know, uh, make use of its existence? And has it been any, in any way beneficial to you? If so, you can send me messages confirming that or denying that. But we'll give you the details of that as we'll have the guests in the studio to discuss what our legal aid has been uh, so far uh, since the, this act was actually established. So this afternoon I'll have with me uh, counsel Linda Aboa, who is a private legal practitioner, also a member of the Ghana Legal Aid. We have Emmanuel K. Ewa, and he's an IT officer actually, working in the office of the Ghana Legal Aid. Also Elizabeth Zenabu. Uh, Nantongma will also uh, join us. She is ADR officer in the office of the Ghana Legal Aid. She will also give us what her work really entails. What are the challenges? And we'll be explaining that here on the platform. You want to uh, stick with us and also uh, appreciate what information we shared on this show. We will also later on, before we wrap up the show, we'll take you to the Volta region and other areas or adjoining areas that have been affected by the Akonso Mudam, of course every day, every uh, other day. The news and all other programs on this platform, Metro TV, will bring you more updates, and that's what we'll be doing here on Good Afternoon Ghana. Let's take a break. When we come back, Maxwell will take us through what he saw in the office of the Ghana Legal Aid. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to Good Afternoon Ghana. Now let's go straight into the issue and the first one on the table is the Ghana Legal Aid, um, if it's really helping us. Now I was trying to clarify what we had or what we have, right? So what we, we have the Act, which is the Ghana Legal Scheme Act, 1997 Act 542. And then we established a commission in 2018 and uh, that is what is also uh, I don't know, facilitating, and as we have them on the platform, they will explain to us what the commission is also doing. So the commission is the, the Legal Aid Commission Act 2018, Act 977. We'll go into that later, but let me introduce the guest before Maxwell comes in, Linda Boateng, lawyer, and she's here with us, Legal Aid Officer. Uh, with me in the studio. Welcome. Good afternoon Thank to you. you. Good Thank afternoon. you so much. That Maxwell was able to drag all of you into the studio. <laughs> right. I, 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 owe her, I owe him a lot. So I also have uh, Emmanuel K. Ewa, who is an IT officer uh, in the Ghana Legal Aid Office. Emmanuel, you're welcome. Thank you, Thank you for joining us. And um, the name I massacred from the beginning is Eliza. Okay, Eliza Zinab. Is it Zinab or Zinabu? Zinabu. Zinabu. Okay, uh, Nakoma. She's also here, ADR officer. And um, what does the ADR do? Uh, it's alternative dispute resolution. So basically, we try to settle issues out of court. Oh, I have a lot to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but before I get them talking, let's cross over to Maxwell in Cancer, who serves us with some pictures to appreciate the office of the Ghana Legal Aid by the 1992 constitution to provide free services to Ghana citizens who cannot pay for their lawyers. Now behind me is that regional office here in Accra. You can see how deplorable state their office look like. Uh, let me walk you in to see how confiscated the office look like, how they pack their document and how they sit. Follow me as I take you to their office. So this is a reception of Ghana Legal Aid. You can see how the office look like. Uh, let's go to their offices uh, to show you how their office look like. Uh, uh, legal units room 11. And so 
Uh, come and see how the office look like. This, are office. this is how they pack their docket here. These docket are cases that they have, they have worked on already. Uh, some of them they are now working on. So this is their, this how their chair look like. A little renovation. Uh, they need to change uh, the offices. The chairs look very. Uh, some of the chairs look very bad, and uh, it doesn't look well at all as a legal aid. A office which is mandated to uh, provide uh, legal service. Let's go to other offices as well. Here are uh, some of, uh, I mean, citizens who are seeking legal assistance from the legal aid. You can see them. They are here with their case uh, seeking the legal uh, services. Here is, uh, let me see, account room 10. And so see how the room looks like. See how very confiscated the things look like right now. Behind me is a, a, a trunket with full of document, not properly arranged. Uh, I don't think uh, this is the office uh, that uh, legal practitioners who are supposed to, to work for the citizenry supposed to stay and provide services. Look how they pack their document. I'm, I'm sure they need a uh, new offices, new drawer that will help them pack uh, that document. Let, let, let's go to uh, different uh, office as well. Uh, this is uh, JT Accra Regional Director's Office, room nine. Let me enter. And so, yes. Uh, no, okay, I can see they're working on some documents. Uh, look, look, how they, look how they pack their document. Look how it looks like. Very, very confiscated. Uh, uh, I think... Uh, so I'm sure these are cases, uh, docket of cases they have worked on. Some of them think they are still in process. And it doesn't look good at all as an institution that's supposed to work for uh, uh, Ghanaians. I mean, uh, if you can see, I think they, they need a office. When Attorney General visited the office in 2022, he promised that the government is, is building a office, a 12-story building for them. And I've not seen that happen. I think I've seen a new building. I don't know if that's the, uh, the building Attorney General was uh, speaking about. So let's go out to a different office. And uh, this is the registry room three. Let's go in. Well, we have some uh, councils working on uh, some, uh, ap uh, some applicant. You can see she's working very tightly. Uh, trying to have one of uh, our own brother who is in a, a situation. You can look and look how the place looks like. Very, very, very bad. And this is a legal aid office uh, which is mandated to provide legal assistance to Ghanaians. And so, uh, Annie, this is how it looks like at the office here. Very, 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 very bad. Uh, how they pack that document. It's not their fault, though. Um, it's because of the office space, uh, limited space. So they can't do anything than to manage. And so the question is, uh, what is government doing in getting them a new office uh, to move in, to help them, uh, also help Ghanaians who are in, in desperate need in the country? You know, not all Ghanaians can uh, afford to pay lawyers. So this is what government is providing for them. This is the head office staff. Let me take you to head office staff. I can see I have some cancer. Oh, oh yes. So come in, come in. So this is the uh, head office staff. As a head office staff, just look how documents are being packed. And in, this is how they pack their dockets. Some cases. I'm sure some of the cases already in process, some of that thing they are done. But they need a new drawer, a new office, very special office that will enhance them work. And I think they need a, I think they need a financial support as well to help them vehicles, uh, more lawyers to also help them in doing their job. Because uh, without vehicle to convey them to uh, uh, the court, I'm sure it's also constituted to delay of uh, they are processing the case. Uh, so let me take it to the other office as well and then uh, tell you.
Maxwell in council there serving us with what we want to see in the office of the pro bono or officers who provide pro bono. Yeah, I'll put it that way. Okay, so I think right from the start or the beginning of the video, it will strike you. I, I mean, the first thing that struck me was the weeds. And I'm wondering, was that right in front of the office or was he standing in the weeds? <laughs> Where exactly was he? And then you see that the building is really dirty. I mean, that's the best word I can use. Very, very, very dirty. Going inside, I don't know if I can compare what I saw inside the building uh, to uh, what outside the building, if they, if they tally. Because it looks like the outside looks more dirty and unappealing than the inside, to be fair. Right. But from what we have seen, council, and uh, uh, let me go to IT first. Okay. Let me go to IT first. This one, IT. How do you work? Well, um, in the commission, we do most of our work manually. That's quite recent that we had some donor partners coming on board to help us with digitizing uh, our documents. Documents, okay. That's underway. But the implementation is slow. Very slow. That's because. We rely solely on GOG funds. Okay, if you can come closer, a little Sorry. closer. Yeah, sure. We rely solely on GOG funds. So as and when... Okay, go ahead. As go ahead. and when GOG releases funds, that's when we can get some money to do whatever we want. But uh, it's not that enough. So when a donor partner comes in, that's where we also put our challenges. And where they can support, we, we go ahead with that. You, you are, I mean, you are captured as an IT officer. Exactly. Uh, do you have any position to be able to tell me, or are you in a position to tell me the uh, staff strength of the IT department? Sure. Um, actually, the whole commission, nationwide, is just me. Just one. Uh, yes. What? Yeah, just one. Wait, you are the department? Yes, I'm the head of the unit. I'm the department. You are the head? <laughs> Everything. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> you are the head of the unit. What unit? The IT unit. Which unit? The IT unit. But that's just a single person sitting there. So what unit so, do you have? Yeah, so that's the unit. <laughs> if we had, like, the video rightly portrayed. If we had space, I think it would have been far better. Now when we're recruiting... So now you're recruiting? No, I mean, when... We ah, okay, recruiting. should you recruit? Yes. So you, officers. the whole commission of exactly. uh, Ghana Legal Aid Commission, you are the IT department. Exactly. That is it. So the aid that you are getting coming in, yeah. you are the one, you're the only one they were working with? Yes, apparently. Where was the aid coming from? Okay, so we ha we've had um, donor support from Arab. Uh, we had from uh, OBDAT, that is from the U.S. Embassy, the legal department from U.S. Embassy. And currently, we are now with UNDP. Yes. UNAP? UNDP. UNDP. Yes, oh, they are okay. implementing some projects from the U.S. Embassy. So we have R, we have U.S., and we have UNDP. Yeah, not U.S. aid, U.S. Embassy, OBDAT. U.S. Embassy. Yeah. Embassy. Yeah. How did the aid come in? Has it come in or did they just assure that it will oh, no, it's, it's come. It's so come. What, how is this aid? Is it financial aid? Is it um, digital aid? Is it technical aid or financial aid? Okay, so with the current one that we have now, it's, it's, it's across board. Yes, there's a technical, there's the digitization, and then the other part. Financial aid. Yes, so when I joined the commission, what I've realized, so what I've seen so far is the donor partners that come, they look at what they want to support you with, and they go into that. We've had countless support from UNDP before I joined the commission, and they've done so well. We'll, we'll have to appreciate them. They started the uh, mediation centers nationwide, getting us district offices nationwide. Now that Arab came, they supported us with some vehicles, just four pickups. They helped us with our case management system, which is here to be implemented. Yes, now U.S. Embassy came in purposely for the Public Defense Division. Yes, and now we are having UNDP again implementing the U.S. Embassy's project. Yes, and that's, I think that's the new, newest bit in town. Yeah. So, <clears throat> since you are just an individual representing the department, when the aid comes, it definitely will not just come to you. Yeah. Um, we have government institutions that's so under the attorney general 
they will be liaising with these partners. Uh, and then they, they will serve you with inf feedback, feedback that this yeah, is what. Yeah. So what is the latest feedback you have on the support that you heard was coming okay. in? So with the enactment of the new act, which is the Legal, Com Legal Aid Commission Act 2018, we are now independent financially. Administratively, we are still under uh, MOG. That's our mother ministry. Yes, so we, we liaise with them directly from the head office. Yes, we have our executive director, the head of admin, and some other officers at a management level that lives with them, and then it comes down. Yes. Pro bono lawyer. From your side, I mean, I, I actually went straight to IT because I was wondering those papers that were packed, you know. Okay, so on your screen is a chair or, yeah, a seat supposedly for persons who are coming to seek services, right? Okay, it looks like, so if you, you have to go to the office, that's the chair you sit on. Okay, it, it's, it's okay. Okay, um, you will be seeing the videos as and when. So, you, when you wake up and you go to work, you go straight to this office. Or oh, maybe yeah. describe to us. <laughs> Very well. You representing the rest of pro bono lawyers. Yeah. Yes. Let's understand how the nature of the work. So, so you wake up and you have to go to the office. And even where you are even supposed to park your car, which you have fooled by yourself to even go to court, becomes a problem. Because that building you saw over there, it's not a legal aid building. We are, let's say, tenants in the building. It is for Council for Law Reporting. So we oh. are tenants over there. It's for Council so for, for Law, law reporting. reporting. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's not even your building originally. Exactly. So, the, so oh, let's see the building. I mean, uh, Maxwell, where you were standing. So, um, so the Council for Law Reporters, where do they sit? So they occupy the first floor and the second floor. How many floors is this? Three floors. Three floors. Okay. Yes. So you're occupying the last floor? The last floor, but not even all, part half of the, um, f um, the ground mm -hmm. floor. Okay. Yes. Okay. So cool. you come in, you can't even park your car. Before you get out, clients are waiting for you outside. They have to sit under a tent and wait for you. If we want to accommodate all our clients, the corridor you saw over there cannot accommodate them. Right. Yeah, so some of them are kept outside, especially um, the fresh applicants. They are kept outside, attended by officers even outside. And then when you are to see a lawyer, to be assigned to a lawyer, then you come in the corridor. And even if you have to, you are coming even for mediation, mm -hmm. that's one you have to even stay outside. And the outside, we have only two tents. And the, the bushes you saw over there, yes, they are real over there. Are you? Yes, yes. they are real, yes. So, clients? So, the Council for Law Reporters and the Ghana Legal Aid, um, they both cannot provide for cleaners or, um, you know, uh, persons to clean environment yeah, as in when they need, I mean, constant cleaners. Yeah. Yes, we have, we have cleaners. Just um, the officers you saw, we have only two cleaners for legal aid. And then Council for Law Reporting, I cannot say anything about their cleaning. So um, sometimes we have to even um, ask our, um, the watchman to do that service for us because the cleaners, they are two women who even get tired sweeping or cleaning these the offices. Yes, the whole building, the, the, one, the down floor that we occupy. So it was depressing, honestly, to come to work. And these cleaners don't run shifts? Uh, no, no, they don't. So until one is sick, and if both of them become sick, then, then we have no to. there's no cleaner? Yes, there's no cleaner. So, so a lawyer, after how many years of school, you get into an office and you can't even, okay, you are lucky, you have an office to sit, some are sitting home. <laughs> <laughs> no, and even in the office that you saw, unfortunately, lawyers have gone to court. You will see that we are tending to our clients all over the place. There is no confidentiality, no privacy. So Which should be part of your work. Exactly. 
because sometimes critical. some some yes some informations are so critical that and confidential that clients cannot say it in the presence of other people Everybody. and it's it's a big challenge to we the lawyers because you go to court and when you meet your client in court after you have prepared everything your processes and or applications then the the your client will meet you and say that, oh, cancel, please, I wanted to say this to you, but I was so shy, and there were people around. What are you going to do? You are done with whatever that you have to put in, and you have even gone ahead to file, and yeah. you are going to court. And thus is um, a critical challenge, because in, 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 in um, the legal service, or so providing legal assistance, confidentiality is very paramount. Mm -hmm. And we lack that. And it's really affecting lawyers. Sometimes you have to leave them at the, you have to meet um, your clients at the car park. They sit in your car so that you can take their instructions. Oh, so no. that they become so comfortable to bring out information to you. Yes. How do you locate files and cases? <laughs> Wait, that what was, I saw that was another big challenge. Because um, sometimes our files got um, yeah, mixed up or even missing. Because the shelves are not enough for the lawyers. We don't have enough cabinets to keep our, our files. And so Mark saw the, you know, they open any cabinet. But um, can I guess that almost all the cabinets are full? Yes, because, they are. Because, I mean, Ghana Legal Aid has been operating since. So. Yes. You'll be marveled the number of cases even at a, a day we attend to. Today, for instance, is Friday. Lawyers go to court with about 10 files nine files, the least will be five files for legal aid, a legal aid lawyer. And that is only for Friday, so yeah. starting from Monday. So you can imagine the number of files that you have to keep. I am not a senior lawyer, a most senior lawyer, but if I tell you the number of cases I have, even in just my small practice, you'll be surprised. Maybe somebody, a senior lawyer in the whole entire life had not even had such um, dockets to deal with. Do you receive your salaries regularly? That's one, yes, because we are under the um, government of Ghana, so the controller and accountant general, yes, so it is a regular salary at the end of every month. And is it satisfactory? Honestly, honestly, not at all. You see, um, I see it that... If you compare yourself to your colleague that is not... In the I see that. Business. I think it's a passion that we have. Exactly. That's what I because probably see. Because apart from the passion, there's nothing moving us to be pro bono lawyers. Because um, now, with my years at the bar, my consultation fee is supposed to be around 600, mm -hmm. between 600 and 1,000. Okay, so just imagine the number of people I attend to a day. If I'm supposed to be a private lawyer, mm -hmm. the consultation fee alone can even take me home. If I attend to 10 people, let's say six times 10, that is 6,000. And even if I'm supposed to charge 1,000 cities, that is how many? 10,000 Ghana cities. Yes. How much? That is 10,000 Ghana cities. Consultation. For just consultation before the legal fees. So, so even um, when we started the legal year, three of our, my, um, two seniors and then a junior mm -hmm. has just resigned. Because my, the seniors, for instance, when you look at, compare yourself to your colleagues who are in private um, practice and how the, their status now, as compared to you who is doing the service to yeah. the, uh, the country, you, you are just far behind. So if you get a better offer, you leave. You want to leave if you get a better offer? If I get the chance. But it's so, it's so unfortunate, I, I wouldn't say... You lost your passion? I, um, it's, it's actually <laughs> depreciating. It's depreciating. Yeah, yes. Let me come to ADR. That's all, alternative... Dispute resolution. Dispute resolution. Okay. If... if um, um, great, that's what I've been waiting for. That's the washroom. Yeah. That, that's what I've been waiting for. There was one time I did went to the information ministry to take the pictures. In fact, I was not strong enough to put it on air. <laughs> so that's the washroom. This obviously for male. No, we share. Oh, what do you mean we share? We share. That one there. Oh, how do you mean? Male, female, we all share. Yeah. 
So if you go in the, and, and, and IT is there, what will you do? I just turn my face to him and go in. You, know. you turn away from him yeah, just and he will also turn away from you. Yes. So we have some cubicles in there. We do our business. So we just enter the cubicle. Well, then this I, 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 LGBT fight, you people have taken the lead. <laughs> But there's no male, female. Anybody can make that. Anybody. I thought we were fighting that thing, you know, internationally, <laughs> but that, uh, the it's practice is, is real in Ghana. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's, it's nicely accepted in Ghana when you go to the legal aid office. Subtly. <laughs> <laughs> this one's not subtle. This is real. This is very loud. <laughs> when you go, just turn away and do your own thing. Really? Yeah. The place of convenience. So... At, so the, those are the cubicles you see over there, two cubicles. So this is probably if you want to do number two. Yeah, number two, yeah. Okay. For the men, but number one and two for the women. This is sick. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure if this video is not enough for us to say, okay, we have closed the show. <laughs> Seriously. But, um, I come in. Sure. Yes. With, with the washroom. Oh, oh can we bring the video back. He's talking about the washroom, yeah. Yeah, with the washroom, we used to share it with the clients okay. who come around. So just imagine clients coming, you as a staff, entering and a female client also entering. What do you do? Yes. So we're so fortunate enough for the past uh, GBA president, uh, lawyer Tony Forsen. Uh, he mobilized some funds, and then we built a new washroom outside the office for the clients. For clients. So now yeah. clients don't have to use this Clients one. don't have to use ours. But even with that, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. Because those who have yeah. been there before, we still walk straight to the place. Then yeah. You wouldn't know who's there at a point in time. Yeah, there are several occasions I've been there. You just meet a woman trying to, then with that, you just have to close your eyes, move back. Good to go. So literally, women have to hang on that thing to do number yes. one. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. And you know the clientele we deal with. Yes. These are people who are not too learned. Yes. Yeah, so they do anything anyhow sometimes, and this job is a passion. Oh, you can it's say it. Like, like they can do number two, two even yeah, in number sometimes one. Sometimes you walk in and there's number two in there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, mm -hmm. it takes. It takes courage. I thought my washroom was not nice, but this one day. <laughs> oh, but my, my, I can sit in my washroom and, and read. Not yeah. my home or here. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, then it's, you are fortunate. Yes. I mean, well, if you can relax and sit and read. <laughs> so imagine the two cubicles occupied. Wow. Idea. <laughs> so what, what we do at Legal Aid? Mm. <laughs> You used to, from your desk, tell me your story. Okay. So I would say, uh, for me, I, I tell people that working illegally is a calling. If you don't have the passion, as Rolanda said, you can't work there. You need a big heart to be able to work in legal aid. And um, basically with ADR, what we do is we try to settle disputes out of court. Um, when a matter is reported to legal aid, if, it, if the case is not already in court, we try what we call mediation. Um, it's an ADR mechanism used to settle where the mediator sits as a third party neutral to assist parties settle their dispute. Um, and it's supposed to be a private and confidential session, but at the moment we don't even have space to you know, hold such sessions. So we do it in our conference room and you have, let's say, two mediators mediating different cases at the same time. Sometimes you find parties to a different case eavesdropping on yeah. another case. Yes. And even trying to suggest solutions to yeah, a case that is not his business. Exactly. And it uh, defeats the whole purpose of that confidentiality. So sometimes you finish and... You know, you realize that although you are done, you are not satisfied because you are not able to meet all the, you know, how do I put it? 
you, you, you can say you are, not, you are not able to satisfy your clients the way you know as a professional you ought to. You don't so, fulfill the agenda exactly, for which you Exactly, exactly. So that in itself, it's worrying. Does the, the regular lawyer sometimes refer some cases to you? Yes, they do. Okay, and, yes. and, and how, how does it happen? I mean, um, what, what will make uh, maybe her desk mm -hmm. refer a case to your desk? When she listens to the person and realizes that this doesn't warrant us going to court, she can... So if, for example, it's a divorce case, yes. she will listen and say, yes. oh, this, this we don't. Yes, we matter. can resolve, especially if it's, let's say, a customary marriage that hasn't got any, you know, contending properties, you understand? You can just resolve it. Most of the time, it works out. It works. Yeah. So why is divorce cases so high? <laughs> there are different aspects to it. What I can say is that... Because if most people, of the times it works, I don't expect divorce cases to be so high in Ghana. It is really high. In legal aid, let's say if we... Admit 10 cases in a day, four are divorce cases. So it's under ascendancy. But what I can say is, as a mediator, uh, mediating cases that has, like, has to do with marriages, you realize that most of the time people are very impatient. Mm -hmm. That is the crux of the matter. Very impatient. You know, they don't, and I don't know if it's because of our financial situation and all of that, people don't have the patience anymore to, you know, really jaw jaw with their partners. The least thing, they are out. Hmm. I really wanted to talk about, this is, you know, shifted the focus a little, but yeah. it, so let's, let's uh, delve into the issue of the challenges you have in the office now. So when did you, have you ever even sat on air, you know, try to talk about your issues and it's not been um, attended to and it gets worse by the day? And I'm sure it's gotten worse by the day because uh, the last time I saw the legal aid office, it was not looking this bad. What I knew that that was the legal aid office mm -hmm. wasn't looking this bad. I didn't know that it was also occupied or you were tenants actually in that building. Yeah. So why is it taking so much time for us to fix? Because for people who are literally volunteers, they should have the best of. Yes, the best of service or the, the best, best of the best of environment. Environment. Yes. Okay. So. Um, with the coming into force of um, Act um, 977, we made a lot of noise. A lot of education went out um, through the media. When? We were on TV. When? Um, that was after 2018 um, when... Uh, yeah, yes. when the commission was... Commis yes, it, oh. it became a commission. That one is normal because normally when there are commissions, you launches know, and things, yes, the that's when you get the opportunity and everything, to sneak yes. in things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... so um, the public got to know that, oh, so there's something called legal aid, although we were receiving a lot of clients. So um, now our clientele became very large. Through the media, we used to go to Peace FM, we used to go to UTV. We had the opportunity to um, even those YouTube um, broadcast, yes. Oh. Yes. Um, other, other offices were um, having programs over there. So, and especially in Accra, we had um, an organization also helping us organize um, a legal um, clinic yeah, okay. at the Makola um, How was that done? What's a legal clinic? How was it done? How was it uh, administered? Oh, okay. So, um, we set up um, cubicles and then with the information service, the PA system, so that we... Educate. Educate, so yes. So you inform the inform public. Inform the public on legal aid, what legal aid is. So from that, we also got our clientele from the market women. You know, they have a lot of issues, but 
as to they some never even knew. And yeah. you'd be surprised that even in Ghana, some government institutions don't even know that legal aid is a it government is. institution or even exist. Hey. Yes. Yes. I guess you're surprised. Yes, it's true. Mm -hmm. Very true. Le le government institutions, institutions don't know legal aid yes. exists. Yes. Your letter, you, you write a letter to Definitely. them and then they ask, ah, legal aid, is it the private institution or oh, a government a institution? Government. Yes. But you know that we derive our even uh, from, from the constitution. Mm. Yes. So with that, with that publicity, now our clientele increased. So that is why when those days when you come, we like the place was a, more, um, a little bit conducive than what we saw today. Now we have a lot, lot, lot of people coming in for legal aid. So, so we're trying to, you know, uh, talk about their challenges and still at the same time announce to you that there is the existence of legal aid so you can seek aid uh, or legal aid or legal services pro bono that, that means you are not going to pay for the services that's being provided to you however if you go and a lawyer shouts on you you can understand <laughs> the office doesn't look good Especially <laughs> when a lawyer trained, uh, administrators trained, IT persons trained, and the basic, the very number one basic thing they want to get in life is a place of convenience, and the place of convenience is not even conducive to use. A lawyer might be very pressed. You are talking to her or him, and she can't understand. <laughs> I'm sorry, but no, you have to, you have to laugh for something. It's facts. real. Yes, it's so it's real. It's real. Yes. I'm so yes. pressed with P, and you're sitting there saying some case. I have to attend to you. Oh, come on. And when you get to I, the washroom, you realize that there's a client over there who is a, a male. So you have to wait for that person to come out before you can also enter. Yes. But this is unfair. Very, very unfair. So what? So why do you wait for Commission 2018? This was 2018. We're in 2023. Yes. So how 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 you you know when you you said um, uh, alternative dispute resolution, I was in um, the disaster prone area, hit prone mm -hmm. area. I was in a uh, disaster there. hit area, mm -hmm. Volta. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And there's a woman. There's this woman I spoke with. She had. She was uh, carrying a baby boy little baby boy, and I asked her how many kids she has. She said she had three boys. So she's also displaced, you know. However, so I asked well, where the husband is. Then she said the husband sacked her from the house, right? And that the husband says that she's not fair, as in she's not light-skinned, she's too slim, she's this, she's that. So she has taken the matter to court in the vault area, but she doesn't have money, so she can't go again. So she decided to, to you know, I don't know, just abandon her. Yes, just let it go mm -hmm. and take care of the children or something like that. Then I was wondering, okay, can she get pro bono in her region? Because if yes. in the greater Accra, this is your mm -hmm. office, I don't know what is happening in the regions. Okay. So, you, you, you want to help? Yeah. Or you, okay. You, can right, so, let, let me make this clear. Um, Legal Aid Commission, they are present in all the 10 traditional regions. Yeah, okay. The new regions that were just moved, The six added. The six. Yes, we are yet to convert those offices to original status. Yes. So anywhere in Ghana, you can visit our offices and then you'll be assisted. Where? So you're, you're telling so, yeah. uh, customers that the already existing offices are still there? Yes. 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 Okay, they have not been, um, what's it called? Broken down into the oh. 16 yet. We still have them as the 10, 10 traditional, traditional offices. Yes. All the capital cities. So Accra, Koforidia, Kumase, Ho. We have Buno, that's Sunyane. We have um, Western, that's Second Itakade. Then we have Tamale. We have uh, Bogatanga, and then Uwa. Uh -huh. All those offices are functioning. But it's a peculiar situation. Across. Yes, across. Across the country. Across the country. The office space is everywhere. And in the whole country, you are the IT department. Exactly. I like it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we had a good system set up, it would not be difficult for you to be retrieving requests. I mean, if we had a network, 
requests will be coming in from lawyers and ADR's offices. Mm -hmm. Yes. And all you need to do is to release, release the cases to them. Yes. That, that, that's all. But that yes. one, crowd, I think you, you will need help. Maybe, oh, need, maybe some help. 10 desks. We need help. You know. the, the whole situation is about the office space. That is like um, Council rightly said. Then the people weren't much, but now there are many. Um, let me put this across. Even with our clientele, the sensitization programs we do, we've halted them in Accra because we, could, we, we, we couldn't. We couldn't take care of the masses that were coming. Yes, just the small announcements we're doing. There are too many. We so, so, so let's be let's be honest. Maybe because we're working, and at the end of the month we get something from government. Media, all I'm looking for. I don't know. I just pay me. I don't care what you do anymore. Is that not what's happening? No, oh, not, not at, at all. all. <laughs> I like the chorus. Sure. No, because that will say no. When you come to the legal department. Lawyers are doing the same application as private lawyers who are receiving, and we are also battling with these private lawyers who have been paid juicily, and we are doing the same cases. We defend our not, clients. You see, it's not possible unless you tell me like it's, it's with passion. But how effective are you to make your case in court? Really put up a strong defense, knowing very well that my office is such a mess that it already angered me when I got there. And I have to move from that office or from that filth, best, best, best described, to the courts to defend a case that I have not been paid for. And I'm already angry. How are you able to fight private lawyers who get juicy, you know, um, what's it called? Payments. <laughs> that is, yes. Yeah. From, from the what they do. Yes. Oh, as Eliza said, it's a calling, actually. Anyone um, who comes to work with legal aid, I think uh, it's been called by God, I can say that. Because um, we do good job as any other lawyer would do. When you come to even the public defense, that is where we, we have the criminal cases. We go on to appeal for our clients, which most even, most even private lawyers don't do. And... Um, Whatever that we are supposed to do, whatever application that we are supposed to file, whatever we are supposed to do, whatever um, argument that we are supposed to make on behalf of our clients, we do. Yeah. And yes, our clients are so satisfied with the job we do for them. I think, how, you see, how, because, well, of, because of the passion, you forget about sometimes um, I use a 4.0 car. My husband fuels it for me. And... I, I, I will travel to Kaswa, Aquili, to go and do a case with my own car and my own fool. What it's drives me to Mr. that Amor. place? No, no, that's my father's name. Okay, so what's your, your husband's name? It's Mr. Amwa. Mr. Amwa. Yes. Mr. Amwa, thank you. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's all I wanted to yes. say. Uh, thank you so much. Husband of <laughs> lawyer Linda Abwa. Yeah. So I will go there. We go to Sotium Court with your own because... Um, just recently, the AG was so passionate, and then we got some cars from Ara. He also promised a 12-story building. And, and we we'll are hoping that. and praying for Where's that. The site? We'll come to that. Uh, we, we are, we, 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 the, 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 your current Yes. yes. <laughs> we are just praying that um, God will touch his heart so that he'll move us there. But, but the Council for uh, Law Reporters... If, should you move out of that building, that building should still be put in good shape. You know? It yes. can be well renovated yes, yes, exactly. and it can be put to good use. I mean, I'm, I'm not really for all these, our, our tests for abandoning buildings. Yes, when they we are even, old, we abandon mm -hmm. them and they we are, we, we, um, Even we, the lawyers and even some of our staff, we are advocating that. Um, the, the AG should move even the Council for Law reporting to their new building, okay, the ages building, so that we can have the whole, whole floor. Yes, floor to ourselves. And that will really serve a purpose. Because since we are already there, and then we receive clients, the okay. other departments of the AG do not receive clients. Okay, okay. I actually wanted to give a, a bit of update from Akosombo, but my time is running out so fast. Uh, a quick, you know, quote 
from the legal aid, right? And I'll read. My producers will probably put it on the screen for you to see. And it reads, ensuring equal access to justice uh, is a call to action for all. Therefore, we must find an alternative means to ensure no one is left behind in the quest to find justice, availability of uh, paralegals to the vulnerable or marginalized in our communities will lead to inclusive growth in our society." Unquote. Quote, we must leverage stronger partnership to address injustice in our societies. These paralegals are the most effective way um, is it to, okay, I lost this one, so I think I'll leave it there. The most effective way, is it on? No, I can't get Only it. can get that to only probably goes. Okay, I wanted a second one. So if I can have that second one then. Okay, so that is by Mr. Martin Amoyao. And the, okay, so the guide remains an important element for paralegals like myself to carry out our duties successfully and promote the delivery of fair justice for all uh, at all times. So that uh, is quotes from a former executive director of the Legal Aid Commission, Mr. Martin Amoyao, right? It's fair, all right. But last comments before we go, I'll, I'll let you go first. Right. Um, Maybe with the 12 story building. Yeah. So, uh, well, when I joined the commission, what I know is where the 12 story building is, is our land, actually. There had been some series of conversations that went on between the AG's department and our office that they want to put their building there to house all the agencies under their ministry. And the story is now changing. Yes, the story is now changing. I'm in the head office. Council is in the Greater Accra Regional Office. Okay. Madam Eliza is in the Greater Accra Regional Office. And we said that head office and Greater Accra shared that small part of the um, Council for Law Reporting building. Yes. So So even with what you're calling, they are all in the same yes, building. Yes, we are all we are all in the same if you if you heard Maxwell, Maxwell is like this head office. Head this office. Is, yes. We are fused <laughs> together. So if you don't know the terrain well, that is it. And council said uh, AG actually gave us some cars last year, but truth be told, it's not enough. Myself as an IT officer, if I have to travel out... No, as the IT department. Yeah, <laughs> as the IT department, sorry. No, no. Yeah. Department. If I have to travel out, sometimes I go on my own, on my own expense, yes. Even though there are cars that's been given? The cars are not enough. In head office, we only have two cars, which are old cars. Greater Accra, only two cars, that's two saloon cars. And we have about 11 lawyers one driver. Okay. Okay. You know, I, let me assure you, last word from you. Um, um, yes, just the last word. Mm. I, I think we'll do this again. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we need to. Um, currently, Pleasure. legally, the regional office is, um, it's basically a construction site. We have construction ongoing all around us. And I don't think it's yeah. safe for hey. the clients that come to us. So, uh, the... How is that we should come to our need, uh, aid? And what kind of construction is that? They're putting up a building? Yes, yeah. and... Um, Twelve-story building. 12 building. And currently, there is it the driveway passes in front of our office. Okay. Yes, yeah, so even as of today, the shed under which uh, we attend to clients is being moved to another place so they can um, they dig a pipeway. Oh. Yeah, so I don't think it's safe for the clients that come to and even be using the, the yes, environment. Exactly. So, so it should probably be declared a construction site. Exactly. For the safety day it reasons. rains, yeah. you, you, you know very well, there's mud all over the place. So something wow. should be done for us. Wow. wow. Um, please, finally, my time yeah, is up. Yes, so my final words are, we are also calling on corporate Ghana to also come to the aid of um, legal aid. Actually, we, we give aid and we also need aid. Government alone what, cannot do. What, what From corporate Ghana, what do you want? So, for instance, the greater Accra region, sometimes even um, some um, resources like even papers, um, computers, um, even cartilages and then um, all those things. Sometimes we have to ask clients, we give them our pen drives to go and even print from outside. 
print um, court applications from outside, court documents from outside the office. Wow. Because our printers are not working or we are out of um, paper. paper. Do the judges yes. understand you sometimes? Well, you see, sometimes, as, as, as I say, we, 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 the, we, the workers over there, we try to not portray what actually is happening on the ground. We try to step in and then do our own thing. Just imagine you are giving a, your pen drive to a client to go. The next time when you slot it in your um, laptop, the virus is all over. But we, we are still trying. It's not easy at all. It's not easy working with legal aid, but because of the passion, some of us, we've been with the commission for the past 12 years, and the passion is what is driving us. The satisfaction we get you when our clients- You mean the declining passion? Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. In your own way. Yes, yes, in my own way, yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yes, um, when we see them smile after court, when you're able to, when you see that maybe um, somebody is out of jail, and you see a woman who is laughing because you're able to uh, just get some maintenance for the child. Mm -hmm. You get satisfied. So that is what drives us. Do you also attend to this? Uh, in the previous chief justice, no, the previous two chief justice was trying to, um, you know, try to establish, I, I can't really remember what we call, uh, it's like a fast track kind of thing for persons who have been in, on, uh, uh, have been detained. Oh, Okay. Well, um, there was a name we she gave to it. Um, I don't know. No, it wasn't a case Justice. Justice for all. Justice for all. Yes. Yes, that is where, yes. Um, courts were just moved to the prisons. Exactly. And then, yes, to, justice to, for all. To, to yes. trial cases trial that cases, have yes. been there over. Yes. And, over and this the... was done with legal aid lawyers. Although we had some private lawyers or some NGOs who came in, but most of the work was done by legal aid lawyers. Okay. When you go to Nsawam, for instance, even as we speak now, they still we have um, um, our councils go in there. So it's still in. Uh, yes. It's still running. Yes. The justice it's still for running. all justice system for is still system. running. Yes. Okay. Okay. This is what Hamdallah was really deepest apologies that I could not bring you, um, Akosombo. Uh, uh, we were supposed to speak with Nadmo because there's also the issue of um, a, a better coordination of items that are going in uh, to support the victims who are told that it looks like donations are just all over the place and mostly you find the MP in picture receiving the donations that are coming in so where is not more coming in so that we are co coordinating it effectively and make sure that the victims every single one is going to benefit from all that is coming in, in the meantime we're also bringing you up to the minutes updates from the water basin, maybe the, the three tongues districts and then the upper side of the country that's all affected by the spillage of the Akonsombo Dam. But in the studio, uh, I had with me Linda Boati Abwa Esquire and, and her husband, Mr. Amwa. Thank you <laughs> for always supporting. Please encourage her not to quit. We beg you. <laughs> Continue fueling her car. All right. She is a legal aid officer. And also, uh, Emmanuel Ewa, uh, for now, I know, I know him. He's not just an IT officer, but he's the whole department of the Legal Aid Commission. Please go and give your application to him because, hey, Okay, and also Eliza Zinabu uh, Naktoma is also ADR officer. She also served out with what they are going through. And um, um, Maxwell Nkansa, I'm grateful for the videos and the pictures that you served us with. I'm sure there will be more. If you have the chance, you can take more from them so that we can help them make their cases heard. And then, in, in our small way, we can also, uh, 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 we can also try to help people who need legal services to really get the best from the persons who are volunteering to help you uh, deal with your legal cases in court. This is what time allow us. Thank you for coming through. But I'm sure we'll have you again. All right. Thank you to the production team. My name is Ania Fampo for This is Friday, so make sure you keep safe over the weekend. Good afternoon. <laughs>